So my name is Avanish Sahai. I am a born in India, raised in Brazil, and have been in, now in the U.S. in Silicon Valley for 35 years. Uh, I've been an executive in a number of companies like Salesforce, Google, ServiceNow. Uh, I've been a board member of uh, both public, private, and private equity-based uh, companies. Uh, and now I'm retired and focus my time on what I think are some of the big issues of helping uh, organizations think about the future. And I think one of the big issues that we focus a lot on is what is the impact of AI, for example. Right? And AI, obviously, over the last um, couple of years has become one of the big topics from an investment perspective, from a technology perspective, but most importantly, from a business perspective. How is that going to change how companies think about their, all their functions, their customer engagement, their supply chain, their employee hiring and retention and development, their uh, financial operations in the back office? And like I said, I've been here for 35 years. I have never seen something become so big, so important, and so uh, high impact so quickly. Why is that? because it is fundamentally something that's going to help change from a productivity perspective, from an innovation perspective, from a speed of development and product launch perspective. It tr delivers tremendous, tremendous value. And we've already seen in some of the companies I'm involved with, productivity increase of 20, 25%. Nothing in the history has been that impactful, that quickly, and across so many different functions. So one of the projects uh, that I was most proud of, I was at McKinsey for a number of years. And in 1999, so over 25 years ago, we did a project for the government of India. And the focus of the project was to think about what India could be by 2020 in the area of IT and IT services. So a group of us got together and we did this project and we said, look, there's a number of things that have to change and they're big policy decisions, but if those are able to be changed and implemented, then by 2020, uh, India could be a pretty sizable technology, uh, have a sizable technology industry. So the things were some core issues. One was making it easier to bring in and send out money for investors from India. So that was one big change. A second one was privatizing telecommunications. All the telecommunication infrastructure in India in that time was owned by the government. A third one was making it easier to start companies. It, was a, it used to be very bureaucratic, took a lot of paperwork and all kinds of things. How do you make that easier and faster? And the fourth one was education, an educational system that would invest in bringing, um, there were some great universities, but there was very few of them. How to get more of the population educated, how to get more people from, you know, India's a 1. now 1.3 billion person country, how to make sure that education was a big part of the mindset. And we said if all those things happened, then by 2020, India could become a $200 billion IT industry. Turns out the government actually did all those things. And the actual measurement in 2020 was that India had a $220 billion uh, IT industry. So we got it pretty close but it took 20 years and it took a lot of change. But I think that is a good model to think about how technology, innovation, digital thinking can help change countries. So, look, having been in Silicon Valley for a long time, one of the core principles is that it, it is an ecosystem. You have the educational system, Stanford, Berkeley, San Jose State. You have venture capitalists um, you know, all, all over the, the Bay Area. You have companies that are founded and started here. You have large companies that have grown 
uh, from being startups to, to very large companies. So that concept of ecosystem, and, and then of course support from government agencies and, and so on, is pretty fundamental. And I think an organization like Instituto Caldera can help facilitate that and bring that mindset to the members, and to the extended members, um, and how to think about that, how to be thinking about their future. And I think about, again, education, I think is a fundamental component. I think focus on capital and investment and taking more risk is an important part. Brazil was not a very risk friendly country, but now people are more entrepreneurial. How do you help them? How do you kind of bring you know, large companies to become customers, to become investors, to become advisors? So I think connecting all those different pieces together is a very important piece of how to drive that type of change.